Before we dive fully into this review, let's get something out of the way first. Most anime games are terrible. Fact. Games like Dragon Ball Fighter Z and One Piece Unlimited World Red are the outliers. They're at the back among a sea of Peach Girl. So whenever a new anime game launches, those of us with actual brain cells are understandably skeptical. Enter Fairy Tail, the latest game based on the popular anime slash manga series by the same name. The game, a turn-based RPG, loosely follows the events of the series between the X791 and Tartarus Arts. Between both arcs are four others, but not all their content is covered, the most noticeable omission being content from the Sun Village arc. So where do we begin? Like the source material, the game follows Team Natsu as they navigate life after the 7 year time skip on Tenru Island. This involves taking on requests, leveling up characters, improving the guild, crafting la crema, and improving bonds among friends. When you begin the game, you'll first have access to Natsu and Lucy. You will then additionally unlock Grey, Elsa, Wendy, Gajil, and Juvia. Waifu squad again! One, two, three. Oh, you know what? We could actually check the waifu- Oh, look at that. Juvia has some tushy. You can see that. Look at that tushy. She got a tushy. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's arcing, but you can see even if she straightens up, that tushy still has some plump to it. Look at that. You can, if we use the measurement of the master in the background, if we switch to one of the other girls, that tushy no longer meets the master. You see? But Juvia, her tushy does. See? Let's do this with scientific examples here. Right? So tushy meets master. Tushy, well her arm's blocking, but we know it doesn't reach there. Mm. Hers is kind of there, but it's not, it's not like Juvia's. Juvia's is all over him. I'm just saying, Juvia has the booty of all booties in the game and she is waifu. Somewhere past the half point, you'll gain access to Kagura, Shidia, Sting, Rogue, and Ichia. During the epilogue, you'll gain access to Jalal with Laxus, Mary Jane, and Gilbert serving as post-game content. Despite being usable during the main campaign, Flair, Leon, Minerva, and Ultia are not playable. They've hoarded away Leon as part of the game's first DLC season pass, with others likely to follow in subsequent fashion. Fairytale mirrors the same controversy noted in games like Street Fighter Cross Tekken, where content was already on the disc, yet players needed to pay extra to unlock them. This extortion practice is even more apparent when playing missions which include these characters with full movesets, stats, and leveling. Why were they omitted if they're already completed in the game? Greed. Koi Tecmo has some of the best IPs in the industry, and they know it. They know fanservice sells and they milk that through some of the most voracious practices possible. Characters with finished models like Levi, Lissana, and Elfman could have been playable. But why be generous when drones will pay for anything? If anything, playing this feels like an early access build of a title that will be finished at a later date. But that's not actually going to be happening. From missing story content to missing character models, it's like Gust had another month of development to complete the game and just said, you know what, F it. Why make a wonderful cheese crusted chicken teriyaki pizza with pineapples and peppers when people are willing to pay the same price for a crusty piece of bread with moldy cheese sprinkled on top? That's what the gaming industry has become in a nutshell. People will pay for anything and developers know that. Games don't cost $60 anymore. Much to my chagrin, Koi Tecmo have continued their unreasonable pursuit of money through overpriced monetization schemes. Just like they did with Dead or Alive 6, Fairy Tail has some of the most overpriced DLC on the market. There's a season pass for 60 US dollars, 3 costume sets at 40 US dollars each, or 349 per costume. In total, this adds up to a whopping 180 US dollars, and that's excluding the base game priced at $60. And you know the most unfortunate thing is that this type of egregious monetary practice is actually working because Koi Tecmo keeps implementing them. The idea probably being that some will purchase the lower priced costumes incrementally while the whales will splash that astronomical cash on what is otherwise cosmetic content that a mother could whip up in an afternoon. 
What's most disconsolate about all of this is that the core game is actually fun. It's a simple JRPG with a highly repetitive yet polished gameplay loop. Going out on requests is an easy undertaking thanks to missions focused on urgency. You accept requests at the guild, then press up on the d-pad to bring up the world map, then choose your destination. Once completed, you'll be prompted to return to the guild with a simple press of a button. Most quests boil down to go into an area then defeating a set amount of enemies. If not, you likely just need to speak to a character or pick up a marked item. There's no sense of discovery or serious difficulty outside of optional quests. Everything is manageable to the point that this can be considered baby's first JRPG. Yet despite its simplicity, the ease of play the aforementioned urgency provides eliminates any boredom associated with tedium. Battles consist of choosing magic attacks with varying grid-based areas of effect. Each attack has a magical type that is either super effective, less effective, or just average depending on the target's magical affiliation. You're also capable of defending, using items, and performing physical attacks. Among those options, you'll only find yourself using magical attacks or items. Defense serves no purpose since enemies will either be too strong to battle or too weak to actually defeat you. As for physical attacks, they're even more useless. They don't do enough damage to even be remotely viable, and no enemies or situations force you to adapt them into your play. Most of all, you'll have awakenings which boost your magical attacks even further and chain attacks to overwhelm even the most powerful foe. Those alone would be enough, but it goes even further. Characters like Lucy learn passive buffs which allow the entire party to attack first. Status effects are usually very effective. Support characters like the first guildmaster can revive the entire party on a whim. Awakenings can stop enemy attacks. Attacks can be followed up and most characters learn a counter-attack. What's even more frightening is that I'm so sure that I'm forgetting some more features which sway the battle in the favor of the player. And despite all of that, the game is still fun. Yes, I would have preferred a bit more challenge, but that's not what this game is for. It's for the casual player seeking a relaxing time while interacting with one of their favorite anime worlds. The world of fairy tale in the game is beautiful, in spite of the low textures on background assets. It being an anime game meant that it just needed to look like this show, and it does. No one is actually going to focus on the lower textures or popping if the game replicates the look of the anime for the most part. What's even more important though are the character models, which is Gus's expertise, especially female anime style characters. With well painted on shadows, cell shading, bright colors, and detailed line work, we get something that will appease fans of anime games. Voice work is also on the mark, although used sparingly outside of main missions. For most side quests and bonding moments, you'll most likely get grunts and one-liners to remind you what characters sound like while you read the text. These side missions are plentiful, but totally optional thanks to the low difficulty of the game. As for character bonding moments, I only did those because of OCD. Some were even void of dialogue, just granting me the celebration for completion of, well, nothing. Sadly, yet another sign of what seems like an unfinished product, albeit a fun one that could have been even better with a bit more polish. Oh, and I almost forgot, don't use the alternative costumes during the main quest because they don't work with the awakening transformations. The transformations are separate alternative models for the base outfits and so they are just swapped in whenever certain characters use awakenings while wearing their base outfits. Using alternatives like the swimsuit outfits will just get you glowing effects around the characters, not the full transformation. Also the game was censored after launch, something I really want to talk about but I'll save that for a separate video. We currently run another giveaway promotion for games and gift cards. This giveaway is a mature JRPG promotion for the 18 plus fans who like a bit of shiggle in their adventures. The giveaway is a joint promotion between Simply Binge, Gabmu, Infinite Backlog, and myself. There'll be a link in the description for entering the giveaway, and if you enter the code ImagePooch exactly as it's presented on screen, you gain some extra entries for the giveaway. If you want more chances to win, then you should also follow our Instagram and keep a close eye on our stories.
So, with all of that to say so far about this game, here's my final verdict. Constructive criticisms aside, this is a fun game at its core. It takes all the fundamentals of the anime slash manga and weaves them into an easy yet gripping gameplay loop. It may just be an assortment of repetitious fetch quests, however, that's the crux of a simple RPG. Mixed in with the fact that this is a game based on a popular anime slash manga series and you have what can be considered one of the better anime games on the market. When most tend to be lazy cash grabs, it just takes a slight amount of effort to be considered good. This is that slight amount of effort. Fairytale may feel unfinished, even cheap in some aspects, but all of that can be excused when at its core, it's an enjoyable experience. Just wait a bit before submitting your application to the guild because you're going to want to get this on a discount. Thank you very much for watching our review of Fairy Tale the Game. If you enjoy our review, make sure to check out our other channels, they're linked in the description. Also, make sure to leave us a comment so you know what you think about the review. And like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you always know when we put up new content.